Hello everyone and welcome to the 20th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how we can work with NS Table Views and bindings. So basically we worked with NS Table Views in a previous tutorial. We worked with the data source methods that go along with NS Table Views and that's how we were arranging our data previously and that was all good because it really does explain how NS Table Views work and really how, you know, kind of the key paths work with uh, that kind of stuff. And it, you know, explains it in more detail. So if you haven't watched that tutorial, uh, make sure you watch that tutorial, because it was like three tutorials before um, watching this one. So anyway, um, nonetheless, let's just go ahead and we'll discuss a little more on what we're doing with this application in a second. So go ahead and select your Cocoa application here. And what we want to do this time though is select create document based application. I'll explain how document based applications work in a bit. But uh, go ahead and for the product name just type in grades. And basically what we're going to be uh, starting is just a simple grades keeping application. So don't expect this to be any special project but um, it's basically just going to be a little bit continued into the next few tutorials as well. So with that, we're also going to have um, this section down here. And once you click uh, this checkbox, you're basically going to be saying, yeah, I want a document-based application. But you also get these two different options here. Just leave the My Document section, and the document extension doesn't really matter. We can change that later if we want to. So anyway, uh, that's that, and um, that's all you have to say. So go ahead and hit Next on this. And we'll go ahead and save this in whatever folder you want. And now we're presented with uh, this beautiful looking application. So you'll notice though that there are a few differences between, well, quite a few differences between this and a normal application. So basically you have this My Document class, which is a subclass of NS Document. And NS Document, or anytime you're working with a document based application, basically means that you can you know save data, load data, and make new documents. So anytime you're working with things like text edit or pages or keynote, basically anything that saves documents probably is going to use a document-based application. So that's pretty much when you want to use uh, you know document-based applications or the NS document class. So with that, of course, there's many other methods now in the implementation section. You'll see the init method here. Uh, I'll skip over those ones because well, they're not really that important. Uh, another two that are, though, are the data of type method, blah, 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 other stuff. Basically, this is the saving data method. And the read from data, blah, 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 method is to load data. So anyway, those are two methods we'll be talking about later on. And a new method that's introduced in Lion is the auto saves in place method, which basically means whether you're going to auto save your document or not. So, you know, in Lion we have auto save now, which basically means, you know, your document can save automatically. So we can either return yes, which means it will, and if you say return no, it won't. So, of course, this method relies on these two methods working, but you know, nonetheless, it's a very easy thing to add if you just want to add the autosave capability. So uh, Apple made it uh, pretty much the simplest way possible. So anyway, uh, now you also notice we have two nib files as well. We have main menu nib, which uh, usually we only have, and we usually have our window in here as well. But in this tutorial, it's just going to contain this menu bar. All your information is going to go into the my document nib file, which is similar to the last or the 18th tutorial that we worked on with uh, creating new windows. Basically, this is like a new nib file, and we're making a different window with it. So with that, we have uh, basically this text here we can delete, you don't need that, and you don't want it anyway. So, uh, like the text did say though, is that this is where your document information goes. So we're going to throw our table view and some buttons here, and this is what's going to display every time we create a new document. So with that, let's go ahead and start organizing this. So we want um, a button on here, it's going to be the add button, and these are just going to be buttons to add entries. So 
uh, remove that will be another one so basically what we're going to be doing like I said before is we're going to be adding and removing assignments on this document so we're gonna have a grades application that will just contain a bunch of uh, basically assignments that we had and uh, you know you can have the name of the assignment and the grade that you got on that assignment that's basically what we're going to be storing in the NS table view and of course you could expand this to you know have the date as a separate column or something but it doesn't really matter um, anyway we're going to be making it simple with just two rows so and with that we'll drag this out to here put this over here and we'll also change the position of this so we'll call this the name and we'll call this the grade and that's just the name and the grade that you got on the assignment so now some logistics of course how this works so every time we hit this add or remove we have to be adding some new assignment to this table view so uh, to do that we have to have some kind of class that represents a row and that class is going to be the assignment class and that basically means every time you add a new assignment you're adding a new you know assignment or a row to the table view and the assignment will have a property of a name and a grade as well so of course we have to make this assignment class so that we can use that data so you do command n to add a new file objective c class subclass and its object and we're going to call this assignment and we'll save that and now we have the assignment class over here and let's just go ahead and set this up so basically the assignment class is going to be containing both an, and a string of a name and it's also going to have an int of a grade and you know you could probably use ns integer if you wanted there um, you know it doesn't really matter what you use it works fine for a grade because you know we only have grades up to 100 so it doesn't really matter and uh, we'll just leave it as int grade so we'll use our properties now because of course when you're working with Cocoa co bindings you want to have properties so uh, property copy for our ns string and we also want to have property of int grade and also we're using the copy prop or attribute I should say for the NS string because it has a mutable subclass and anytime you have a mutable subclass for example we have NS mutable string for NS string you want to make it copy and that's basically just the reasons behind that are because if you have a mutable object passed in you can change it and anyway the point is, is that if you have a mutable subclass, just use copy as an attribute for your class. So anyway, with that, um, we have these two things here now, the copy for uh, a string, and now of course we have to synthesize these in the implementation. So we'll go over here, and we synthesize name, and we synthesize our grade. Now of course the one last thing is to give our assignment some kind of initial value so let's just assume we're gonna have some kind of you know default assignment so uh, let's just go ahead and say name and a string alloc and then init with string and let's say uh, let's say I don't know I do calc quizzes a lot and I'm not exactly a fan of them either so We'll leave it as that, and we'll also say that the grade is a 95. That's the grade I wish I got on them. It's not always what happens, but anyway, that's uh, you know, let's let's live in the imaginary world while we're coding. So we have a calc quiz that's going to be the default name, and the default grade is going to be 95. So that's basically what the assignment class looks like. Now, in the document class, this is where all that information is going to be controlled or uh, rather saved. So the document of course is going to have an NS mutable array where it's going to control or contain all the assignments. So of course this is going to be called assignments and all we want to say for that is we want to create a property and we're going to say copy and that is actually a mutable subclass so that's a good example of when you might want to use it. Assignments and now the last thing of course is to synthesize this and we'll synthesize assignments 
And of course, we also have to uh, create this object so that it's not just nil when it starts. So, uh, of course, we have to say assignments and mass mutable array alloc init. So that's pretty much all we have to do for the data portion of our, um, yeah, all of our stuff. So this NS mutable array in our document is going to be housing all of the assignment objects. And we'll get into how that works in just a bit. So the last little key part that we have here now is how we're going to use bindings in all of this. How we're going to be controlling this data back and forth between the data portion, which is in our NS mutable array, and then onto the view. And the object that we're going to be using is known as an NS array controller. It's the controller class that's going to be basically mediating between the two things. So uh, anyway, just go ahead and search for array in your object library and drag out an array controller. Now, uh, there's a few things we have to say about the array controller. First off, the array controller really doesn't know much about what it's controlling. It just knows how to set and get the values. That's pretty much all it knows. Uh, it doesn't really know anything about the assignment class. We just say that it is going to be controlling the assignment class, and we, we tell it the keys that it's going to be getting and setting data for. We say you're going to be setting and getting data for the name and the grade, and that's pretty much all we tell it. So. You know, it's not exactly a smart class, but it does exactly what it needs to do. So in that regard, it's uh, great. So what we want to do is select our array controller. And if you want, you could actually change the name of this by going to this Xcode label thing right here. But we don't really care about that right now. So anyway, that you can fool around with that later. Um, under the attributes inspector, though, of the array controller, we have this object controller section right here. And we want to basically tell the controller what it's controlling. So we say, yes, you're going to be controlling a class. And the class that you're going to be controlling values for are the, um, the assignments. So the assignment class is what we're controlling. That's the class name. And the keys that it's going to be controlling are the name. Oops, name. And the other one is going to be the grade. So all we're really telling this controller is, hey, we got you know this assignment class. Those are the objects that you're going to be housing, and you want to set the name and grade uh, using their keys. So you know Coco bindings uses you know key paths and stuff to set and get values, and that's all we're telling this array controller. So the last thing we have to do is tell the array controller where it's getting its data from, and we're going to do this in the binding section right here. And under the content array section, that basically means what is the content that you're going to be accessing, or the content of the array. So uh, basically, we have to bind this to something. And you can see that your options are either the application, files owner, or shared user defaults. You might be thinking, hmm, well, I want to be using this document class because that's where my NS mutable array is. Well, convenient you will see that the files owner is actually dun, 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 moment of truth my document and that's basically because anytime you have a document based application the document nib file is basically controlled by the document so files owner is controlled by my document so my document is the files owner so that's great and convenient because our array controller is going to bind to that files owner and since the files owner is my document, it has the assignments that we want. So we can just delete this and we can say assignments. So as we were assignments, that's what we want and that's what we're going to bind to. So now the array knows where its content is located. Perfect. So the last part is, well, not the exact last part, but pretty close to the last part, is basically saying what is going to be displayed in both of these columns. And that's also under the bindings inspector under the value, because that's the values that are going to be displayed. So you can see that it's already telling us, hey, you want to bind to this array controller? And it is so smart, because yes, we do want to bind to that array controller. So we go ahead and say bind to array controller. And you'll see that it has controller key. And this kind of seems weird to us. Basically, it's saying that there's a different, there's a key basically in the controller. 
and that key is just the arranged objects. So uh, this isn't really any different uh, than any other key path, but it's basically saying in the array controller we're going to be accessing the arranged objects. And that all that means is that we're going to be using the objects in the array that it controls. So the arranged objects basically just means the array controller's objects uh, that it's all controlling, and that's the assignment objects. So the arranged objects are the assignments, and that's basically uh, just to reiterate again, um, arranged objects are just the individual objects that the array controller houses. So everything in that NS mutable array, uh, basically those are the arranged objects, and those would all be assignments. So of course, uh, since these arranged objects are all assignments, that basically means we're just left to tell it what path it wants or what we're trying to access in those um, objects. And again, they're assignments. So what we want is the name of the assignment. So we just say name. And the next part, of course, is doing the same thing for grade. So we say bind to the array controller. And we want the grade. And there we go. So uh, last, very last thing is adding, of course, the IB actions for these buttons because we have to say, hey, yo, you array controller, you are going to add new objects when I say add, and you're going to remove objects when I say remove. So to do this, we can right click our array controller or go into the connections inspector right there. And all we have to say is, well, our add action is going to be connected to the add button. And the remove action is going to be connected to the remove button. And that's the messages that these buttons are going to send to the array controller to do various things. So that's really all we have to do. And once we're done with that, we should be able to build and run this. Build and run this. And there we go. It'll compile all the cool junk. Do, 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 do. And it should be going but it's not going, there we go, and Jesus is taking longer than usual. All right, thank goodness this isn't like a huge application because this might only take forever. Okay, so there we go, now we have this beautiful window here where we can add our calc quizzes to, yay, and we can change this to test if we want, we could change this to, you know, 76, which is probably a more realistic score on these things, and there we go. So as you can see, we can also use the remove button. That will remove objects, and there you go. And it nicely moves our selection upwards as we remove objects as well. So anyway, that's pretty much um, you know using the NS or using bindings with uh, NS mutable array or NS table views. So just to reiterate what we did, we had the assignment objects that were our individual rows and basically it had a name and a grade which represent the columns for each of these assignment objects. Then our document, our uh, my document class had basically the array, or, uh, the NS mutable array which had all the objects inside of it. And then the last portion is really this array controller which is that binding controller between the data and the view and it talks back and forth between it using Cocoa bindings. It just basically, we say, well, the array controller, you're gonna to bind to the content array, or the array that is in our document class. And then we also say, well, the values, you can get all your data from the array controller. And that's pretty much all we really did. So, um, yeah, that's um, really all there is to binding and NS table view. And of course, there's tons more you can do with bindings. This is really just uh, limited scratching the surface kind of stuff. But uh, I hope it gives you a good idea of uh, what you can do with Cocoa Bindings. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And uh, you can send me messages via Twitter, Google+, or even YouTube. Anyway, I will see you next tutorial.